Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What were you saying about them peanuts? I said we raised peanuts, cotton, and corn. You raised cotton and corn. And then had a dirt to dirt. You pick that cotton by hand? Yeah. Yeah. How old was you when you picked cotton? Oh, I was probably from five years old to, to 15. You and your mama? My grandpa, grandma, kids, everybody picked cotton. West Texas. Went to West Texas. Yeah. Barefooted. We went barefooted all the time. Yeah. You step, step, step on there, them couple bars. Got out there and got them go heads. Go heads. Yeah. yeah. Bull yeah. nettle. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're go heads. Yeah. You never got no what? bull nettle? Well, that might hurt. <laughs> Guarantee you. You know them go heads? Yeah. You know them ball, ball jacks? Yeah. That's right. That's what that go head looked like. Well, who wants to pray us in? Johnny, you want to pray for us? Go ahead. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the day. We thank you for the brotherhood, Father. Father, we just ask that you, your word be instilled into our hearts, Father, that you lead, God, and direct us through this study. Father, we thank you for all you've done. Bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, there ain't very many people say they pick cotton by hand and toe sack no. or holding cotton no. either, you know. Well, uh, yeah, old, old Herb, he's done a little bit of everything. Yeah, we might have to get in some of that one day and put him on there. Uh, well, uh, we're on, we stop at chapter 8, right? Mm -hmm. We're at chapter 8. Uh, you want to read chapter 8? Sure. You're, you're a strong reader and want them to get after it. So. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters of Sur. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of a hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Aaron. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month in the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. He also sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for his soul of her foot, and she returned unto the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her into the ark, to, unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf <coughs> plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed another seven days, and he sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month and the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from <coughs> off the earth. And Noah removed the covering from the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month was the earth dried, and God spake to Noah, Go forth of the ark, thou, thy wife, thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that 
is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. They that may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kind went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savior. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of a man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again strike any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease more. Alright. What you get? Talk to me a little bit. What are you getting out of that? This, I read this this <clears throat> week. Yeah. The seventh month, mm -hmm. the 17th wasn't I read that before before we got earlier in Genesis what I won't say it was I don't remember exactly where we're at okay, well, what are you getting out of that I just that, standing out to you yes it is and I, I, <coughs> okay the seventh month and the seventeenth day what else haven't they found that art I don't know. Ron White supposedly found remnants of it. Uh, you know, I don't. I couldn't tell you. I mean, I, I don't. I believe some of this stuff is true, uh, for sure. But uh, and why did the raven not come back? The, ra the raven didn't come back. The raven doesn't say did the raven come back. The raven left and That's went to and fro. Yeah. Until the water the, the dove come back. The dove represents the Holy Spirit. Yes. Represents the Holy Spirit. The dove. The, he brought back the olive branch. The, water, the dove is a sacred bird. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. But uh, we don't worship the creation. We worship the creator. I know, but they're yeah. sacred yeah. birds. Yeah, because yeah, the dove has no defense. Yeah. There's no defense in the dove. Hmm. And 20, it's pretty good. In 21, right here it says, And the Lord smelled a sweet savior, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. Mm -hmm. For the imagination of a man's heart is evil from his youth. Yep. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. At the beginning, that's a promise. The, the Lord would have wanted them to get rid of all human humans on the earth, but, but only only uh, uh, Noah. Noah <laughs> had a good heart, and, and he was truthful to the Lord. He kept kept him and his family. Right. You know, he, he had he had to do, he had to do that. Because no Abraham's after Noah, right? Yeah, we're fixing to read about yeah. him coming up. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was wrong. But you know, uh, it says uh, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, I think it's in Peter five. It says, uh, "For God resists the proud and give grace to the humble." says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. That's what happened. Noah stayed humble and preached righteousness, and then in due time, uh, he was exalted. I mean, he resisted the proud. Remember we read in Jasher, and he said, he 
Jasher chapter 6, he said, why do you, um, we read it last week, why do you not return after the 120 years which the Lord gave you? And you, now the Lord won't hear you on this day. He destroyed them because they weren't humble yeah. ever. Yeah. It's kind of. Because their soul was in well, jeopardy. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I, you know, if you read the book, if you read the book or look at Enoch or hear about Enoch, he said the reason why Noah, he, Noah did what he did was to destroy the, the offspring of the fallen angels. That, that they were they were evil and, and corrupted the whole world. And, and, and were they the giants? Yeah. The titans. Yeah, and yeah. he said, yeah. Athelion, Athelion, whatever they... Uh, they're the ones that taught us how to put makeup on and wear jewelry and how to make swords yeah, and breastplates. Yeah. Is okay. what that says. Well, but. It said, well, it said the fallen angels did that, yeah. but their children finally they couldn't stand man no more, so they, they just keep, was killing all the men. It was killing mankind anyway. So, yeah. But that's an Enoch. Even like the dinosaurs, you know, are they not the offspring of something evil? No, you know, they didn't. They must have been. You know, it says uh, it says uh, that they were mixing, you yeah. know, stuff, different seeds, and and even corrupting the animals and the beasts of the field. And you know, I, I don't know. I wasn't there, but it don't it don't really matter to me. Uh, I believe the Lord's real. Uh, well, they're doing a lot of that same stuff today. They're yeah. trying to do all this genetic modification. Yeah. They're trying to right. crossbreed. They're trying to do all these things to pollute God's creation. Right. And uh, oh, you know, there's nothing, the nothing, nothing in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And there's nothing new under the sun. No, really. You know, and, and they're ju just familiar spirits trying to come back in and, and have a way. But we can read here and see that. Uh, we need to lock arms and stand up for it and, and come against it in Jesus' name. Amen. What else? You want to move on? Let's move on to another. I want to really get over there to Abraham. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Read this uh, if you would like, you, you sure can. Yeah. And God blessed Noah and his son and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even read, as the green... Read that again, verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Okay. And as the green herbs have I given you all things, the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. There you go. Yeah. And that's Keep going. Keep, yeah, we'll go back to it. Keep, just read it all. We'll get it. And surely <clears throat> your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of men. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man, shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Mm -hmm. And you be, and you be you fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spoke unto Noah. And to his son with him, saying, And I behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you. And with every laboring creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of the beasts of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the water of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, 
This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and, me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud. Bow in the cloud. Bow in the cloud. <clears throat> and I shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And if it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant with his, between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy the all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is a token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Jab Japheth. 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 And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be in hush husband. Hush husband. 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 <laughs> How are you to pronounce that? Husband man. Husband man. And he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, said the, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went back backwards and covered the nakedness of his father. And their faces were backwards, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, and servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And God shall enlarge Jacob, and he said, he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servants. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. And all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Mm -hmm. uh, what you got, what, what you want to talk about right on there? Well, I'm so forgetful. Yeah. That was something I had. Oh. Uh, that, that bow is the is, is, is the uh, rainbow. Rainbow. Yeah. That he put in there, in there to tell so us. So the sign is not going to be another flood. Yeah. When he said that, I thought that's a prism from that firmament. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a what now? The a prism from the firmament. Yeah. Well, it's the colors of uh, uh, you know. We was at a man's house and he said like a diamond or something like that. They don't give off, um, <coughs> let me show you something. Uh, since you're on that, like a diamond, if you put it under pure light, it's black. It don't give off any light. Like in Revelation, he gives up. The foundations of the wall of the city, this is 2120. The first foundation was Jasper. The second, Sapphire. The third, Chalcedonian. The fourth, Emerald. Sardox. Sard Sardius. Calistralite. Burkle. Topaz. And all these under pure light put off those colors of that mm -hmm. rainbow. Mm -hmm. so, it's pretty interesting. And them, and them stones that them priests wore, they weren't diamonds. They were them stones. You know? Mm -hmm. So, Larry... The prism that you're talking about was the prism of the throne of God. Right. Because he is the light. Yep. And he put off the, That's right. the prism. Yep. It talks about it in Revelation 4, yep. I think, too. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know, one thing I want to look at, start and go back to verse 3. Uh, 
Yes. You know, 1 Timothy 4, 4, it says, it says, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Yes. Yep. 1 Timothy 4, 4, what are the new covenant? We're under the new covenant. If that first covenant would have been perfect, there would have been no need for Jesus to come. Right. It says, For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. And the just will live by faith, and what goes in a man don't defile him, it's what comes out of him. So every creature is to be received with thanksgiving and prayer. You know, it'll be meat for you. But we got a lot of people now today, they want to put us back under the law. Yeah. You know, they'll say if you're not if you uh, if you're not keeping the law, you're not of God. Well the law can't save you. And if you offend the law at one point, you're guilty of all of it. So so it says one brother eats herbs, uh, in Romans fourteen, I think it is. Yeah. That's Zach's favorite. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. He's weaker in the faith because he thinks he's got to do that to be saved. Let not him that eateth despise him not. But, but you see what I'm saying? A lot of people are going to think that they have to eat all these herbs and be vegetarians and be on a plant-based diet. Bodily exercise profits very little. What matters is your heart. Not, uh, it says the belly for the meat and the meat for the belly, and God's going to do away with both of them. Yeah. You know, that's not living or eating don't have a thing to do with serving the Lord. The Lord knows you got to eat, mm -hmm. and if you're raised in these certain cultures, you're just going to eat like how you were raised. You know, it's kind of like being a Baptist. A lot of people are Baptists because their mom and daddies were Baptists. <laughs> you know what be. Don't don't right. don't get caught up in that. Like, if you live by faith, just pray for it and eat it. The Lord knows you've got to eat. He gave it to you to eat. Come on. <coughs> and then it says, um, verse four. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. And it's and the reason why. Leviticus 17, verse 14. For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. That's, right. That's why you don't eat blood. Uh, Acts 15, 29 says this. I was going to pull this one out. Uh, what does God command us in the new covenant? Here's all he says. He talks about for the Gentiles that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication from which if you keep yourselves you shall do well. He didn't say stay away from meat. He said things that are offered to idols and, and from strangled and from blood. Um, I don't think you're supposed to eat any kind of like heart well, that's meat. You just can't drink the blood of it. But it's all blood in it, you know. Like a chicken, strangle it. That would be against God's word. That would be something strangled. If you think about it, right? Huh? Would that not be? Would that be right? Wouldn't you just sever the head instead of strangle it? Because the life's got to come out of it. Why? Well, you know, talking about drowning it. Well, he said, it bring it neck. Yeah, it'd be strangling. In the old days, they just go right. out and bring the chicken's well, neck. They could broke his neck off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it says to keep away from things that are strangled. And they will blood. They will bleed. It, head comes off. Okay, all right. Well, if his head come off, then yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, even out there at the plant, they got a certain way that we're if we kill one of those chickens. Just break his, take his fingers and break his neck. No. Well, they don't try to pull the head off, no. but, but you don't need I the never could do it without well, pulling I'm, the head completely off. I'm and not arguing with you. I'm just asking, you know, when you strangle yeah. a chicken's... No, that's bringing their necks off. Okay. So that wouldn't be strangling yeah, one. Actually, the head is what comes off. Okay. 
I'm gonna yeah. have to walk around out there and get grass, although that 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 bone is sticking out of it. Right. Well, I'm just. It says in verse uh, Acts yeah. fifteen twenty. Uh, it said, "Well, it says in nineteen, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Don't trouble." He said, "But that we write unto them." Here's what he commands the Gentiles: that they abstain from pollutions of idols, from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. He didn't say you can't eat meat. No, it didn't. So, and God no, said that no. every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. That's right. You know, and when Paul was uh, on his road to Damascus, uh, let me read that to you right quick. I just want to get a few things out so we can get on that. Every moving lit thing that liveth shall be meat for you. It says, uh, Even as right. the green herbs have I given you all things. Acts 9 says, uh, Verse 19, and when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Uh, even we're going to read in Genesis where uh, Jacob and Esau, Jacob prepared a lentil, or no, one of them prepared a venison stew his father asked, uh, Isaac had asked him to go out and get. And they prepared it. So, I mean, eating meat, you know, don't let people put you back under a yoke of bondage saying you can't eat. Everything is to be received with prayer and thanksgiving. That's what my Bible says. Mm -hmm. That's what it says, yeah. That's what it says. So uh, the law can't save us. The law just shows us that we are sinners. The law is good if we use it lawfully, but if you offend it in one point, you're trying to do that to be saved, you're guilty of all of it. So I just wanted to point that out because there's a lot of that going on today, people being put under the yoke of bondage instead of just serving the Lord. But there, uh, back in those days, uh, the hogs run around and they eat dead creatures. They eat dead animals. Right. And, and no telling how long they've been laying there, they could have had a disease. Then the hog eat them and then you eat the hog and it makes you sick. That's what he was saying. It, it, the things that eat like that, we was, you know, to be careful of. And Praise the Lord that he lets us eat that stuff now because I starved to death probably. I mean, uh, because we believe when we ask God to bless our food, it's that done. He's cleansed it. That, I mean, That's right. our faith makes that possible. That's right. I mean, the cleansing of that Amen. food. Amen, brother. I hear you. A lot of other animals eat other animals. Yeah, possum. The fish does the same thing. Jesus yeah. ate fish. Yeah. That's meat. But, I mean, but there was a fish that sucked all the dead stuff off the bottom. Right. Unclean fish. A yeah. bass, Anything without scales. A bass eats live, you know, meat. Right. They, they, but it, here's what it says, though. Yeah. For every creature of God is good. Yeah, right. Yeah. And nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Yeah, come on. I can't get around that. But can so yeah, uh, the my uncle said rats are good to eat. There's uh said rats are good to eat. Well, but they people hey them, them Indians I believe ate rats. Mm -hmm. uh, my uncle was but this was part of their World diet. War II. It they was eat eat them. Them. I ate liver and I've had some rain bag. For me, uh, Louisiana people eat neutral um, rats. Yes, they they say it's all about the elements. Not for me. See, it's whatever you're raised on, though. If you would have been raised up eating it, you would have been all down there. Mm -hmm. Birds. They never yeah. say it was chicken. Out. Something else I want to point out is uh, mm -hmm. it said, uh, verse 20 And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank wine. And was drunken. Yep. And was uncovered within his tent. Yep. Now listen up here. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw. You know, he he said Ham is the father of Canaan before Canaan was born. Saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Shem and Japheth took garment, laid it upon both the shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward. And they saw not their father's nakedness. 
Listen, and Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, his grandson, before he was born. Cursed be Canaan. Well, is he talking about the land of Canaan? Or the, or the son? No, All right, man. No, no, no. I'll fix and explain it to you. Leviticus 20, 11. And the man that lieth with his father's wife has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And the man that lieth with his father's wife. Well, why did he curse Cain and his grandson? Because it wasn't his son. It, was, it wasn't his son. It was his son's son that laid with his wife. Oh, yeah. His son went on and done it unto him. And when the mother two went back, they covered their mother up. That's covering their father's nakedness up. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You get me? Yeah. So when you sleep with your father's wife, you're uncovering his nakedness. Uh, it says, you know, they went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And and when Noah woke up, he said, Cursed be Canaan. That seed that was in that wife of his was from his son. And now he's going to be the servant of the other twos. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, you study it for yourself, but that's what I get out of it. I'm not. Well, that's what. Yeah, that's what I get out of it. I mean, so I'm going to read it again. If a man, let's see, and the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. I mean, it, men are around men all the time that are naked. You yeah. think about it. We take baths and, and, you know, I mean, I'm not saying we do it on, like when you're in school, you were in school taking baths yeah. and showers and the men and the women were over there doing it there in athletics and the military and that's not, he's talking about his son was with his wife and uh, uncovered his nakedness. Mm -hmm. But it says here that Noah drank that wine, he was drunk. That's right. If you drink enough of it, you'll get drunk. Yeah. See, so Ham let his daddy get drunk, then he went in there and messed with his mom. That's oh. right. There you go, John. Amen. So, yeah, I studied that for a while, a long time. I could never get it, and I read it in Leviticus. I was like, well, there it is right there. That's what God's talking about. And, there, and Leviticus gives you what you shouldn't be doing and should be doing, you know, on that. Mm -hmm. Anything else? That's pretty good. Yes, it is. But I was just thinking about how people say, well, you can't eat the barbecue ribs can't eat that catfish. You know, we live by faith. Yeah. We need what we want. God gave it to us. It's meat for us. Yeah. Now, some of it may not be healthy for you. I don't know, but you got to work your own salvation out. Yeah, the Jews, they under the law. A lot of them are. They, yeah. they under Noah's law. Yeah. Let me read you this right here, too, in Galatians. Right quick. Well, it's good for you as long as you don't you know, you don't board yourself with it. Listen to this right here. This is Paul and Peter going at it with one another, working it out. Paul said in Galatians 2, 14, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, liveth after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compel us the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we may be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, period. So it's, it's the just will live by faith. And, you know, I, I'm going to address something else. I just feel like being bold on that. A lot of people will not call Jesus, Jesus Christ. They'll want to call him Yahshua, Yah, all these other names. God has many names, but there's only one name that can save you. And do all that you do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when Luke, Matthew... All of them were writing these, the Gospels. They were Hebrews, right? 
They're probably writing it in Hebrew. Well, when they wrote to the Greeks, they didn't translate God's name in Hebrew to the Greeks. They wrote it in Greek. And above Jesus' head when he was crucified, it was written Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So all can understand what was going on. And when God spoke to Paul, he spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue. Well, when he spoke to Charles, he spoke to me in English. I can't understand Hebrew. I only know English. And if you read like your Geneva Bible, uh, there's no J's in the Old English. In Old English, uh, there's no J's. So, there was no J in the Hebrew either. So, like, the Holy Gospel of Ephesus Christ, there was Jesus Christ. They would have said Jesus Christ. Even though there wasn't a J, there was an I, and the F was an uh, S. You see what I'm saying? You see that. So, so I'm just saying, though, when they wrote them Gospels, they didn't change God's name from Hebrew. They wrote it in Greek where they could understand it. So this would be the Word of God in English. You see what I'm saying? But, yeah, because when, when the angel told Mary the name, he didn't say Jesus. He said Yeshua. What? Where's that? Well, if you if you common sense, they didn't even speak English yet. They didn't even comprehend English yet. That's right. I spoke Hebrew. Yeah. So when God named Jesus, He didn't call His name Jesus. He called His name in Hebrew. But we're fixing to find out. In chapter 11, that everybody was of one speech. And who's the master of all those speeches? God. Yeah. God. So he knows when you're calling upon him, if you're in English, if you're a Chinese man, if you're Hebrew, if you're an Indian, he knows who you're calling upon. So. Yeah. I mean, it came along right away. Yeah. Over time, yes. But this gospel is preached all over the world. And in order for it to be preached over the world, it's got to be preached in every language. And like that, that Geneva Bible, it says right here in the front, uh, it says this. Look, listen. Translated according to the Hebrew and Greek and conferred with the best translations in diverse tongues. And then from this version, okay, it's not, it's it's in old English, then it goes into perfect English. Well, if, like we talk. Yeah, if you go to, to China, where people don't know how to speak English, they're not saying Jesus. They're saying whatever it is in Chinese. That's right. And if you went to Hispanics, or they would Russia say... Russia, or whatever. If they're all calling you by what they say. You were Gre language. or Greek, you would say uh, Jesus Christos. Yeah. You know? Anyway, I just want to put that out there. You can yeah. study it for yourself, but uh, I had this book of Jubilees here with the uh, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. Uh, talked about uh, uh, here's the map of what parts they went to Ham Sham and uh, Jake Sham anyway you can look at that if you want according to the book of Jubilees so. alright I'll be quiet we can read some more but that's important though yeah. a lot of people don't want to call Jesus Jesus they want to call him some other name you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. if I'm going to come and speak uh, to a Hebrew well I would probably call him 
in their language. If he's going to talk to me, I don't know their language. He would have to say it in my language. That's my point. So when they translated these, when they wrote these gospels to the Greeks, they didn't change it from Hebrew. They wrote it in Greek, even though they were Hebrew, because they were writing to the Greeks. They couldn't understand Hebrew. So don't be deceived, is what I'm saying. God's word is pure. God's word is pure. It's flawless. It's written. It's settled in heaven. And that's why we're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrines, because we want to believe it's all this that's not true and we want to pick and choose what we want to say but mm -hmm. when Jesus shows up every eye is going to see him I mean we know that alright Renee I'm going to read this hard for you go ahead uh, 10 yeah, I like it over 12 alright go ahead now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, Meshach and Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Ashkenaz, Kenan, Kenazaz, I don't know what that is, and Ripath, Ripath, you're doing good. And Targama. Targama. And the sons of Javan, Elisha. Elisha. And Tarshish. And Kittim. And Dadanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families in their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizram, and Put and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Seba, and Hergala, and Sata, and Rama, and Sata, and the sons of Rama, and Sheba, and Dedan, Dedan, and Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Iraq and Akkad and Cana in the land of Shinar. Out of, out of that land went forth Asher and built Nineveh and the city Rehoboth and Caleb. And there is in between Nineveh and Caleb the, the same as a great city. And Mizraim begat Ulam and Anaman and Lahabim and Nephilim, and Hadrusim, and Kaslum, out of whom came Philistim, and Hathorim. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Judasite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Barbadite, Bar and the Zimrite and the Hamathrite, Hamathri, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon as thou comest to Gerar, Gerar, and to Gaza as thou goest, and to Sodom and Gomorrah and Adama, Adama and Zeboam, and even unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. And to Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, and the elder, even to him were ch the children born. The children of Shem, Elam, Asher, and Arphaxed, and Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz, and Pull and gather, gather and mash. And Arphaxed begat Saul, and Saul begat Eber, and unto Eber was born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begot Alma, Almadog, and Shelah, and Hazaramah, and Jerah. 
and Hanoro and Uzel and Dakla and Abal and Abimelel and Sheba and Elkor and Havla and Jobab and all these were the sons of Jerusalem. And their dwelling was from Mesha as thou goest unto Sephar, a mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their tongues, and their lands after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Uh, it says, who was, uh, it says in Cush, verse 8, begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. All right. Jasher chapter 7, verse 24. I'm going to tell you how he became mighty. <clears throat> and the garments of skin which God made for Adam and his wife when they were out of the garden were given to Cush. That's talking about the coats of skin God made for Adam and Eve when they sinned. For after the death of Adam and his wife, the garments were given to Enoch, the son of Jared. And when Enoch was taken up to God, he gave them to Methuselah, his son. And at the death of Methuselah, Noah took them and brought them to the ark. And they were with him until he went out of the ark. And in their going out, Ham stole those garments from Noah, his father. <coughs> and he took them and hid them from his brothers. Ham stole them from Noah. And when Ham begot his firstborn Cush, he gave the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from his sons and brothers. And when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave those garments through his love for him. And Nimrod grew up, and when he was 20 years old, he put on the garments. And Nimrod became strong when he put on the garments, and God gave him might and strength, and he was a mighty hunter in the earth. Yea, he was a mighty hunter in the field, and he hunted the animals and built altars, and he offered upon the, them the animals before the Lord. So that's how he became strong. It was all the way them coats that Adam and Eve had from God. Yep. Mm. When they put them on, then I guess it protected them, made them strong. Uh, and it says uh, these are things I found and it says in, eight, in verse 25 and unto Abram were born two sons the name of one was Peleg for in his days was the earth divided his brother's name was Jokatan uh, in the book of Jubilees chapter 8 8 through 10 and in the sixth year thereof she bare him a son called his name Peleg. For in the days when he was born, the children of Noah began to divide earth amongst himself. For this reason he is called his name Peleg. They divided it secretly among themselves and told it to Noah. Uh, and it came to pass in the beginning of the third jubilee that they divided the earth into three parts for Sham, Ham, Japheth, according to the inheritance of each the first year and the first week when one of us who had been sent was with them. And then it gives you a map of how they divided it. But, you know, the earth was divided. That, that's what it, it was explained in that in 10. Yeah. But jubilee mm -hmm. talks more about how yeah. the earth was yeah. divided. Yep. See, all these scriptures, uh, the Lord didn't give you 66 books. The Lord gave you scriptures. Amen. You know, the, all this information, you got to search the scriptures to find it. Yeah. You know. See, in, in 19 to 10, it said the, the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon to the, as thou comest from. Jazar unto Gaza as unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and that was all what Ham had. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. You want to read 11, John? Ham's cursed. Yeah. Eight, eight, eight. But you know, a lot of people don't know that the earth was divided. 
they don't know where that what that's talking about or where it's at. What's in the book of Jubilees? Eight verses eight through ten. It tells you about it. Uh, you know, and even the one that who got once got one that God said he hated. Cain. No. Uh, uh, Esau. Esau. He yeah. said Esau went to where yeah. Russia said. Russia, all that over there was. The book of Jasher talks about yeah. how Joseph fought Esau. Yeah. yeah. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. See there, it was one. Yeah. All right. And it wasn't really even just Hebrew. It was ancient Hebrew. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I couldn't speak it. If I did not know. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick of stone and slime. Slime. Slime had they of mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language. Mm -hmm. That they may not understand one another's speech. Mm -hmm. So the Lord scattered them abroad from bench upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth and from thence did the Lord will scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begot artifacts two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begot Alphabet, 500 years, and begot sons and daughters. And Alphabet lived five and thirty years, and begot Shalai. And Alphabet lived after he begot Shalai, 403 years, and begot sons and daughters. And Shalai lived 30 years and begot ever. And Shalai lived after he begot ever 403 years and begot sons and daughters. And ever lived 4 and 30 years and begot Pele. And ever lived after he begot Pele 430 years got sons and daughters. Pele lived 30 years and begot Ruth. And Pele lived after he begot Ruth 209 years and begot sons and daughters. And Ruth lived two and 30 years and begot lived after he begot Shrog 200 and 
seven years and got sons and daughters. And Sherab, Sherab, Sherab lived 30 years and begot Nair. Nair. And Sherab lived after he begot Nair 200 years and begot sons and daughters. And Nair lived nine and twenty years and begot Tari, Tara. And Nair lived after he begot Tara a hundred and nineteen years and begot sons and daughters. And Tara lived seventy years and begot Abram. Abram. Nara and Hera. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah. And Terah begot Abram, Narah, Nar and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran did, Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity. And in the Era of the Chaldees. And Abraham and Narah took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And the name of his wife, Malka, Malka the daughter of Haran, the father of Malka, and the father of and Sarah, Sarah was barren. She had no children. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarah his daughter-in-law his son Abram, Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Pura of the Chaldees and go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. I wish that was going to be two hundred. But... Huh? <laughs> go ahead, what you got? I mean, it's like uh, as they progressed, like the land of Canaan is where Canaan settled, and they called the land Canaan. It's like Haran, he was uh, the brother of Noah, and they settled in that land and called it Haran. So Terah died in Haran. So as they moved, they named the land after the elder. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, oh, go ahead. We got the whole the whole earth was one language, right? And God come down, and, and when they were trying to build that tower to go to heaven, right. He made it. He he he, he uh, confounded their languages, right? And give them all a different speech, and they couldn't understand one another, and they couldn't build nothing That's right. to go to heaven, and. Uh, and they called it, he called it Babel. Right. Babel because it was a little over to them. You know. you know, Trinitarians, look at verse 7. Here's what a Trinitarian is going to tell you. Go to, let us go down. Huh? A Trinitarian is going to go to this verse and try to tell you, here's the Trinity. Let us go down. And there confound their languages that they may not understand one another's speech. That's right. A Trinitarian is going to tell you, see the us, let us make man. Who made man? God in his word. God's a counselor unto himself. Yes. God's not counseling with nobody. Is there a God beside him? He knows not one. Let me show you something though right here in verse 7. Because you need to know this. You might write this down in your book. Jasher 9.32. 
And your Bible mentions the book of Jasher, so there's a book of Jasher. Yes, sure. <laughs> Joshua chapter 10. Uh, 1 Samuel 1 18, I believe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it talks about the book of Jasher. Jasher. The let us, verse 32 of Jasher 9. And God said to the 70 angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor, and they did so unto them. Who was God talking to? The 70 angels. Come on. He wasn't talking to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures. They all point to Jesus. We're not Trinitarians. The word Trinity is not in your Bible. I'm just saying, a Trinitarian is going to go to this verse. You need to write that down in your Bible. We'll look at Jasher 9.32. It'll tell you who the us is. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to point that out. I can't help it. I mean, that, that's a lot of reason why then people took them books out of the order. Yes. The because Catholic Church took them books out of the Bible. They communicated with yes. angels and they, don't want, they didn't want the people to realize that we could communicate. Well, they want to keep the Word of God from you. Yeah. That's yeah. how powerful the Word is. They want people to sit around and argue about it yes. all the time. Yeah. Yes. All right, we're going to move on here to Abraham. I'm going to do some reading. Uh, this, word, this is where I want to get to. This is where it starts getting. All right, now here's the way we are when we first come to the Lord. You know, Herb's my granddaddy. I followed him a long time, but he didn't die for me. You see what I'm saying? I mean, this is the way Abraham was raised. Through all these generations, he was living in a land of idols. He was living in a land of sin. Chapter 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west on the east and there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord and Abram journeyed going on still toward the south and there was a famine in the land and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there for the famine was grievous in the land and it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai his wife behold now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that thou shalt say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, that thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake. And my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into the Pharaoh's house. He entreated Abraham well for her sake. 
and he has sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants, maid servants, and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? And saidest thou, She is my sister. So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore, behold the wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Uh, you know, I was thinking about uh, that verse one. I was just going to see what I wrote down in, in the, that's pretty powerful uh, mm -hmm. whenever you want to come to the Lord and, and get into the meat of the Lord you got to quit listening to everybody else mm -hmm. uh, he said uh, uh, oh, Exodus. I wrote down a lot of uh, scriptures like Paul let me show you something Galatians 1.1 1, 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ, God the Father who raised him from the dead. Verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, and the land that I will show thee. You know, all our families are not serving the Lord. No. Uh, we got to come out from among. Look at Romans 1.1. 1, 1. says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Uh, I got Exodus 3 and 1. Let me read that one. Exodus 3 and 1. What's that say? Same thing with Moses, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, three and Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, oh, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert <laughs> and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. So it says, he, it says also in Hebrews that uh, Moses, uh, in chapter 11, says uh, let me find it he said he, this is Moses choosing in verse 25 of Hebrews 11 choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season that's what Abraham's doing he heard from God faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word God did it, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Verse 4. we got to quit listening to everybody else. What I say, the kingdom of God is within you, and anything outside of that is not of God. It's within you. So you're going to have to seek God yourself and just be obedient to that small, still voice of what you need to be doing. That's what I'm saying. If you're raised Baptist, you're probably going to go to a Baptist church. If you're raised Pentecostal, you're probably... But the Lord didn't say be none of that. You'll be holy. That's right. Uh, anyway. Be ye holy. What time is that? It doesn't matter. 1115. Well, we huh? 1115. Okay, we need to read another chapter. Let's go to 13. So, has anybody got anything you want to say on this before we go further? Mm -hmm. Well... And, yet, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thee 
thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I've got Genesis 18, 18 and 19. Most of them are. And, uh, and seeing that Abram shall surely become a great and mighty nation, <coughs> and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, and that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Let me throw Genesis, I mean Galatians 3, 27. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. A lot of people ain't even been baptized to Christ, so they can't put Christ on. Come on. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Come on. And it said that... Uh, it says, it talks about Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing where he went. By faith, he should join in a land of promise as a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac, Jacob, the heirs, with him of the same promise. And it says, these all died. Uh, these all died in the faith and didn't see the promise, uh, you know, after they died. But but they did receive the promise through their heirs, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah. I mean, it could go on and on. I mean, but, but you see where he's calling us out of the mess we're in? And he told Moses, take your shoes off. Why did he tell Moses, take your shoes off? This is holy ground. Because the way you're going to be walking now is holy. You're not going to be walking in the world. You're going to be walking holy. You've got to worry about go heads. That's right. <laughs> so, Zach, you want to read 13? If you want. Um, I probably won't be able to read King James very easy. Okay. So, someone else probably. Better at it. Alright. Renee, tear it up for us. <coughs> <coughs> huh? <coughs> and Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, and silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent <coughs> had been at the beginning. Unto Bethel and Ha, Ha, unto the place of the altar which he had, had made there at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in on the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou wilt depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked, and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot 
who are separated from him, lift up now thine, own, thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as thy dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. What you got? I like how Abraham said, well, if you go that way, I'll go this yeah, way. If you go that way, I'll go this way. It don't matter to me. I'm walking with the Lord. <laughs> you know what I mean? It don't matter. They said they had plenty of water in every direction. So. Oh, the land was probably way better than it is now. You know, oh, Why right. was it yeah. stressed like it is now? Well, Cain, that's where Moses was bringing the people to it. They said grapes was as big as it took two men to carry one grape. Yeah, Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Said what now? Took two men to carry one grape. Yeah, yeah. Really? on their yeah. shoulder. Yeah. 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 That's how that's how great that land was there. Yeah. That's why land was so big. That's so big. Yeah. It's a big grape. That's said a big they, grape. But said you know there was three rivers. Three rivers that yeah, that separated out. I mean, right. You, you think uh, why you think he was very rich and counter with silver and gold? You think he got some of it from Egypt, maybe? Well, it's all, it's all of it. Take this right here and yeah. get on out of here. Yeah, that's what. Ain't <laughs> yeah. that what happened to Moses? Yeah. Right. He was right. serving the Lord, and the Lord. That's how they got. That's how they were making that golden calf dancing around it with all that gold they got out of Egypt. You know, when Pharaoh hardened his heart. Yeah. Yeah. Take all this and get on out of here. That's right. Uh, the land. That's how Abraham blessed Melchizedek, gave him the tenth of everything that he had. Yeah. That he took from the king. And the Melchizedek then was Shem. Yeah, Shem. Yeah. In the order of the Melchizedek. I thought it was Jesus, but it wasn't. There was a Melchizedek, there's a Melchizedek, yep. Melchizedek priest, yep. and that Sham would have been the Melchizedek, Melchizedek in that era, yeah. Yeah, but according to Jubilees. Yeah. It wasn't out of the Levite order, they was out of the, the Melchizedek order. Yeah, out of uh, Judah. They Mesodetic. Judah. Mesodetic. Renee, read 14. We'll stop it. We'll play stop it. Are you mad at me? No, you're just very good. I can't get Zach to read now. He's scared of this king of the Bible. Me either. He's making me. What? Strong meat, you know. Oh, get on you like that. Yeah. 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 Strong meat. Make you will. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, Raphael, king of Shinar. Ariok, king of Elisar, Shadol of Lamor, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Nation, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and the Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemeber, king of Zebul, and the king of Bela, and the Jezor. All these were joined together in the vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served. In the thirteenth year they rebelled, and in the fourteenth year came Shadolamor and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephrams in Ashtoreth, Karnaim, and the Zuzims in Ham, and the Emims in Shavah, Kiriathim, and the Horats in their Mount Seir, and the El Haram, which is the by the wilderness. And they returned and came to Emishpat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites that dwelt in Hazazah Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom 
and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Amal, and the king of Sibon, and the king of Bela, the same as Zor. And they joined battle with him in the Vale of Sin, with Shador Lamor, the king of Elam, with, and with the title king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and the Ariot king of Elisar, four kings with five. And the Vale of Sidon was full of sun pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that these his brother was taken captive. He armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them into Havah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kudalamor, Lamar, and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shavah, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up my hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even the shalachit, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shalt say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Amor, Ashkel, and Mamre, let them take their portion. Sham was the uh, king of Salem, the Mesodetic priest, and the order of the, Mechiz the Mesodetic priesthood. Uh, that was in Joshua, he said underneath him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's how he learned about the Lord. Him and his body. Yeah. Yeah. Let's read one more. That way we can get, into, get on in there deeper next week. Genesis is 50 chapters. Mm -hmm. man. 50, is it 50 or 50 more? 50, I think. Yeah. yeah, it gets good. It gets on down there, man. Uh, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceedingly great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is thee, Eli. Eli, Ezra and Damascus, of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir. He brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. He said unto him, so shall thy seed be. He, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Mm. Boy. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of your Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. He said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? He said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He took unto him all these and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. 
But the birds divided he not. When the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, and deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, so was the sun moving or the earth? Yeah, sure uh, yeah. Lo, horror of great darkness fell upon him. He said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, shall serve them. They shall afflict them 400 years. That's talking about the children of Israel right there. You know, when uh, Moses came. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And after they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to the fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying unto him, Thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river of the river Euphrates, the Canaanites, the Kenizzites, and the Kedemonites, or whatever, and the Hittites, and the Persianites, and the Rephans, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Gergeshites, and the Jezbites. Yeah, and then he talks about, we'll get into... Uh, Talking about Sarah, and uh, we'll get into. Uh, did, he, did he give him a, a son or, or a daughter? Yeah, he's about yeah, to. He's about to. And, and Sarah's going to laugh yeah, about it. And, uh, and Sarah, he's going to have, he's going to, when he come out of Egypt, he got Hagar. And uh, Hagar, Sarah's going to tell him, I'm 90, I can't have a kid. Go into my servant Hagar and get her pregnant. Yeah. So he done that. That's the that's the that's the son born of the flesh, but the seed mm -hmm. of the promise mm -hmm. came after that. That's where you got these two nations fighting today. Yeah. Uh, so you know. But he get, but he gets another child from the woman that from the Lord. Yeah. yeah. But they I, they they weren't living by faith at first, yeah. even though the Lord told them. That's how we are. Even the Lord said this, but we don't do it. And we're all guilty of it. Yeah, Sarah, she laughed. God yeah. heard her laughing because it said she was going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's read 16. Let's read it. It ain't that long. We party longer than this when we're serving the Lord. Yeah. I'll read it. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare him no children. She had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. See, Hagar came, and Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Hmm. Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in yeah, her eyes. Yeah, she didn't like her no more. She didn't like her no more. And uh, Sarai said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abraham said unto Sarai, Behold, the maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleased thee. When Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from, the face, from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, he said, and he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. The angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. 
And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. He shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren, and shall call the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore the well was called Beerlah, Be Belara. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Beer. And Hagar bare Abraham a son, and Abraham called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. Abraham was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Uh, let's read one more. It's better. See, I'm just getting y'all some Bible now. Uh, but you see, though, he got in the flesh and he didn't believe. And God just told him over here, said, hey, you're going to have your own son out of your own bowels and you didn't believe what the Lord said to him. And uh, anyway, Sarai gave him her handmaid because she was already old. And, and, and that for Islam, is, Islam. Yeah. These people, what Ishmael was Islam. Islam. All right, this will give you what else you're looking for here, Herb. It says, and when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, so he's 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. <laughs> Walk before me, singular, and be thou perfect. Mm -hmm. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thy seed the exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face, and God talked to him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in the generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee, the land where thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee and the, their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man, child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man, child, in your generations. He that is born in the house or brought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in the house and he that is brought, bought with the, thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. The Bible says circumcision don't profit you nothing. It's the keeping of the commandments of God in your flesh by, you know, walking in holiness, not by the law can't save you. It shows you. The uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, thou shalt be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God said unto Abraham, and for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, 
I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. He left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought with his money, every male among them of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day as God had said unto him. Just like when we come to the Lord need to be baptized. They didn't tarry or play with make an appointment. They got it done. They didn't make yeah, they got it done. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael's son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the self same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. And all the men of his house born in the house and bought with money of a stranger were circumcised with him. Boy, that's powerful to be circumcised at 90 years old. In 11 it says, And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. So is he telling him to circumcise himself? Uh, and you said it was one of how they done it. Like, yeah, ye. Uh -huh. When he says ye, I know it's, you. Turn it's you. It's you. Turn it off. That's what I'm saying. You <laughs> <she'll> circumcise <laughs> the flesh of your horse part. I know that. Boy, that's had to hurt. Yeah, you can bleed to death circumcising yourself. That's right. But you know, uh, let me read you something. Since we're on that topic, uh, we're, we're on our new code. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it says. That's right. He says, uh, For circumcision very profit if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, the circumcision is made uncircumcised. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, so if people that are not circumcised keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee? who by the letter of circumcision does transgress the law? For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. Right. And it says, What advantage then has the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? It don't matter if your penis is circumcised. It matters if your heart is circumcised. Come on. You yeah, know? Uh, but that's just a sign of what's a shadow of good things to come. Mm -hmm. That was a shadow of good things to come, what the Bible says. So Paul saying the Gentiles, they were, they, they were all it's for the Lord, Jesus Christ, and, and they believed in all their hearts that, that he was their Savior. Peter and told him that they didn't have to be circumcised. That's right. That's exactly right. All right. Pray us out here. Our right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings stowed upon us, Father. And we've been here and hear your word, Father. And I want you to forgive us of all our sins, Father. And be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.